2016 International Builder Show. We're back. I'm reporting on behalf of the Journal Light Construction, and I'm here with one of my favorite building science teachers, Mark Liberté. Mark, we're at the DuPont booth, and they've got a couple cool things that I wanted to talk to you about. Show me this high R value wall behind us, Mark. Yeah, the partnership between Owens Corning and DuPont was created to see how we could work uh, a better connection together between the contractors and traditional materials off shelf. What they've done is taken a conventional two by four wall, added anywhere from one inch to two inches, even more, and adding that insulation on the exterior of the wall. Then using conventional materials like OSB. So we're optimizing a two by six periodically to bridge that, allow the foam on the outside of the two by four wall carry nothing but the fiberglass. Allows us to have kind of nice protection for thermal conduction and uh, moisture convection and all the kind of details that go on there and making sure we've sure got a high performing wall off shelf it's a bonus looking wall it's pretty impressive mark so this r23 wall here has two inches of owens corning insulation on the outside and then a traditional bat in the two by four cavity but i saw some details where this same wall could be built with let's say a two by eight on the outside and we can get up to an r30 in this cavity so this is pretty impressive using like you said off the shelf materials a builder in duluth minnesota or in michigan can get all this stuff at his local lumber yard he doesn't need a spray foam crew pretty impressive pretty nice also that you could you could frame it down on the deck like you normally would stand that wall up ready to insert your insulation put your sheathing on it would feel very conventional other than just the foam layer so I think it's a good strategy moving forward as we have to get this insulation to the outside yeah I really like it hey Mark there's another part of the booth I wanted to look at with you there's a display over here of both standard and real deep recesses and I'm seeing these all over the south going houses and I'm seeing a lot of mistakes made what I think are gonna cause some failures let's go over to the other side of the booth here and take a look at the recess window details okay, let's go thanks all right, Mark, now we're looking at recessed window details. I know we've talked about this before. In Texas, this is a common detail, seeing these recessed windows. And you've seen this throughout the US too, right? Yeah, all this through the Southwest, California, Arizona, New Mexico, this has become the new style. Four inches, six inches, 12 and 18 inch deep insets, really changing the way this happens. But the problem is that we're not detailing it right. And we're gonna really see some flaws in buildings. We still gotta follow the same methods that we've been following and you've been doing forever. We've gotta get this layering right, sloping of the sills, pan flashing the opening, but once that window sets back in, now things change, and we really have to pay attention to all of this. Can't just be a mix of different tapes, different sealants, it's gotta be a system. Yeah, you know, one thing that I see in Texas often, Mark, is when we're, people are doing recessed windows, they're using just the WRB on the flat section and flapping that over. But really, when you see this, it's almost like building two windows. We need a sill pan here, we need a sill pan for the window, and we need them to shingle correctly. Let's take a look at their double deep window. All right, Mark, now we're seeing what I see often in Texas, this double deep sill area. Yeah, and we're seeing this all over the Southwest. I see it in Arizona where I live in California, and we see this double depth, but the problem is we're not seeing the guys put the sheathing on like you see here. And we've got to get this thing returned and built as a watertight box. So you're seeing now a greater slope, more than a quarter inch per foot, really getting this, the layering correct. You see each layer is both of the same brand and of the same materials. It's all butyls layered right and shingled back. We also see the details around the head of the window and how we return the top. So this has become a very important detail that's getting missed. Even looking at things like designing a corner that you kind of manufacture, setting on the inside to begin the start. We got to get this flashing thing right for recessed windows. Yeah, and when you're doing a double deep window, frankly, it's double the, the chances for failure. So you got to get this right. I've always been impressed with DuPont's Flex Wrap. They make some really premium products and they've got some great details. I think people could find these details on the DuPont construction website, right? That's correct. Absolutely. There's animations both on the DuPont site and on the CI site where they can look at techniques where they just build this thing accordingly. And it does take a little bit of practice. And you got to really think about which layer is going on which. But once you nail it, you got it a watertight and airtight assembly. It's, it's worth its weight in gold. Yeah, there's some great details on the DuPont website for this. And also check out my other videos. I've done a couple videos on DuPont's fluid applied for this system. And the fluid applied makes it really easy. It's really a cock gun and a paintbrush is all it takes to detail this entire window. Both are great. Hey, Mark, thank you so much for joining me at the DuPont booth. For more 2016 IBS videos, stay tuned. We're going to be uploading a rapid fire. We've got a bunch of great videos. And thanks to my sponsor, the Journal of Light Construction.